everything about life on the road as full-time nomads is about to change. I can't believe that we are driving to Africa. We are taking a leap into the unknown and about to start a huge new adventure as we are shipping our tiny home to Africa. We've been driving around the world for many years now through many different places and each has its own speciality and interesting things to discover. And we can't wait to see what van life in Morocco is like. We really have no idea what to expect. What exactly is involved in shipping your van to Africa? And how much do we need to prepare for this new land? One thing for sure is that whatever it takes to get there, we know that it will be worth it. And we can't hardly wait to discover the Moroccan culture and see where this adventure takes us. But it's me and Boomerang against the Moroccan desert. Of course, you guys are invited along too. port in Spain and Africa is just over there. It's so close you can swim to it. I can't believe that that is the African continent. This has got to be the easiest relocation across continents ever. It's only a couple of hundred euros um, and we get a boat to an entirely different continent. Africa! It's flipping Africa! We just did a big clean of the combi and uh, took everything out that we shouldn't have. We're not allowed to take too much alcohol. Yeah, we cleared out some alcohol. And also Alaska's been cleared, so we got her paperwork checked at customs before we got into the port. They then said they kind of just skimmed through it quickly and said it was fine. Checked with the um, aduanas behind me um, and everything is good. And she's all good to go and come back into, uh, into Europe. Being full-time nomads, we've crossed many international borders. And one thing that we've learnt is that no matter how much you prepare, you can never guarantee what will happen. At this stage, it's a bit nerve-wracking for all of us. Passport stamps in Arabic, pretty simple process, get on the boat, give them your passport. And I think, is that three months Leah we get? Three months now, which won't be enough, so um, I think we'll be in Morocco a little longer than that, but we'll figure that out when we get there. Maybe we just drive south all the way to South Africa, we reckon. The excitement for an upcoming adventure and the moments of anticipation before exploring a new land is one of the best feelings. What will we discover and how will we be welcomed in this foreign land? And who will we meet? This curiosity is what fuels our wanderlust and love for nomadic living. So I'm just um, waiting in the car inside customs and Ben has gone off to get uh, some insurance, car insurance, which is across the border here. Um, we have read that you can get car insurance from Morocco at the border and in this particular port especially, so that's why we came here. It was all good, they let us go through, or they let Ben go through to get the insurance. Had our van checked. It's all good, they checked us for firearms and for alcohol. They asked us if we had water in here for some reason. Um, they didn't really check Alaska's papers here. Checked for also a drone, they, they checked all our camera equipment to see if we had a drone as well. So I'm glad we um, got rid of that when we could. Done. Drones on their way to Portugal, we're sending them to Miguel. So yeah, we're just still waiting for Ben to come back with insurance and then we're off to go, I think. I think everything's good. Here comes the insurance lady. Plus the keys, babes. Bonjour. <laughs> she wants to check there's a house in here. Oh, yeah. 
That is beautiful, Karen. Uh, thank you. Let me thank you so much. And uh, well, it's not right, is it? Two hundred. So all good? Yeah, all good. Um, You're there for ages. I know because we had a, a disagreement about what a van was. And she's like, "What kind of vehicle have you got?" It's like a van. And she's like, "It was like five hundred euros for insurance." I was like, "What?" You've, you've got to be kidding me, there's way too much money. And she was like, nothing I can do, it's 500 euros. And then I was like, but it's my house. And she's like, it's a house? <laughs> and then she like dropped the price by half. Oh, wow. So apparently vans, she thought it was like a commercial van. We were coming to load up on Moroccan goods and go back. Uh. With. So, I don't know, they get a piece of that or something. Yeah. So, yeah, don't say you've got a van when you come to Morocco because the insurance is astronomical. Good to know. We're in Morocco! Woo! Finally! Gosh, that was stressful. That was actually one of the most easy border crossings. But I was stressed when they were like looking for the alcohol and stuff. And like... I know, he pulls out the, the bottle of uh, oil in the back and says, what's that? <laughs> uh, oil. <laughs> First stop is a SIM card. There was um, a guy trying to sell SIM cards at the um, customs there. But um, I think we're going to go to a, a phone store and get ourselves a SIM card so we have internet so we can navigate. It's a combi in Morocco. So you've been here two minutes and there's already a combi. So much to take in when you first arrive into a new country, like especially when it's so different from the last country that you just spent a lot of time in. So yeah, there's a lot to take in. So we're in the middle of the city, Ben's gone to get um, a SIM card and I'm just looking after the car. We've had quite a lot of people um, looking into the car and just being nosy and checking it out. And I've just been sitting here watching um, this guy in the bright orange vest try to help people parking so he's like running up and down the streets here just trying to help people parallel park and he's really good at it it's really interesting it's really fun to see him do it and obviously like some people tip him some people don't i also saw him save a little kitten from the road too so um it's been interesting sitting here trying to take take everything in in the streets here in morocco there there you are, I looked everywhere for you. I mean, you all, get lost. All these streets look the same. <laughs> Back in the safety of the combi. How did it go? I think I'm being followed. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, internet's super cheap here. It's like um, 60 gigabytes a month. Is that enough? I was like, what if it wasn't? And he's like, well, you could have 90. Nice. Compared to like Europe where we were like 15 gigabytes. Yeah. Having to update it every few days so we could upload videos. This should be much easier. So it's 90 a month and then it expires? Yeah. For like under 30 US dollars. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Right, so... Um, now we go explore Morocco. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, mate. Um, driving in Morocco is an experience. Like, you definitely have to have your wits about you doing this. Definitely kind of got that whole developing country vibe going on of like, no real rules, no real lane discipline, um, which is okay. I'm used to it. It's just been a while, so I have to kind of like get back into the flow of things and sort of people, you just really got to pay attention. And not talk to the camera. Personally, I'll be uh, English letters below that. Thoughts on Morocco so far? People are really friendly. Like we've had so many people like beat their horns and like wave at us. The roads are really good and the streets clean and it's freaking it's a nice place so far. Let's see how long this lasts. I hope it, I hope it goes for the whole time we're here.
stopped on the side of the road because there are lots of prickly pears on the side of the road here. So we're going to go get some to eat. The little hairs, they, they're so fine you can't even feel that they're in you. They're not like thorns getting like prickled by a cactus. There's like eight little tiny hairs and they're like tarantula hairs. They're just, oh, they're so itchy. Not worth it. Roads here are gnarly, let me tell you. Um, Moroccan mountain roads, gnarly. Absolutely insane. Ali just asked me to pull over and pick something up from this roadside stop. Uh, it's 100 dirham. No. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, we just want a little. A little? 50? 50. Yeah. 50. yeah. For a little. All right, back on the roads. Uh, we are not getting honey, right? That was honey she was selling? Yeah. There was bee farms on the side of the road. Uh, yeah. Looked like it would be nice. Um, but she said $10, basically. She said $10 for the big one. And then I said, is there small? And she goes, $10, and like it's too much. And then she said, five. 50 dirham. So lo long story short, we're basically still trying to figure out our uh, Moroccan haggling techniques. Haggling is absolutely necessary in a country like this. So um, we went to 20 and then that was just no. She's like, see you later. I was like, okay, thank you. So 20 is too low. M maybe next time we try 40%. Yeah. Yeah. I think He's it is 40 anyways. Ah, oh, there's the... Cops. Coppers. But they always let us through though. Look at that. Um, they, they just want to look at us long enough to see that we're not Moroccan and they're like, yeah, yeah, you can go. Yeah, the um, cars be so loud. So we're driving to the mountains. The roads here are really dodgy, like really bad. They're, and people drive on the other side of the road too. Like they're either not looking or they just drive stupidly. So, um, yeah, literally a bus came around the corner in the mountain on the wrong side of the road. Like I know you yeah. see that all the time and you think, oh, he was, he was a bit on my lane. He was literally like on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. So we're gonna be really careful driving. Like we said, when we're coming in here, we don't want to be driving at night. Like the one thing that we heard from people about Morocco is to not drive at night time. Now seeing the roads and how people drive, it's just not worth the risk. We really would advise not driving at night in Morocco. The road conditions here are quite challenging and it always takes longer to reach a destination than the distance would have you believe. On this occasion, we pushed on later than we would have liked to reach a campsite in the mountains. Last night we drove until it was night time and we really wanted to get to this spot here. We're in Chefchouan, <laughs> uh, which most of you would know it from it being uh, that famous blue city of Morocco. You'd probably seen Instagram photos of it. It looks gorgeous. So we came here last night. We didn't know where to stay, so we found a campsite just up here. Um, and yeah, we're going to explore the town today. I think we're in the Rif Mountains, so we're driving across that last night. Um, and it was a really lovely view before it got dark. 
but it's really beautiful here in the mountains and there yeah, the town looks gorgeous so let's go check it out. As you can probably tell, Chef Chouan is a place most Moroccans and tourists alike want to visit. It is gorgeous. And as it's perched in the infamous Rif Mountains, it is also where they grow the cannabis. You may know that Morocco is Europe's largest supplier of illegal hashish. So if you're visiting this region, expect to be offered it frequently. Wanna go high? Don't know whose idea it was to paint this whole town blue, but it was a good idea. It's so cute, all of these little... I mean, I'd love to have seen the evolution of this town, how it all got built up upon each other. The streets are just crazy. So many playful kids around here too. Alaska's been dog napped already. Where are you going, guys? So much cool stuff. This is the point where you really wish you didn't live in a tiny house because I could fill a regular size house with a lot of this stuff. Got some fresh mint from a lady for 50 cents. I'm sure we got ripped off, but we weren't gonna bargain about 50 cents. Big lot of mint for mint tea later. We've had to protect Alaska from um, cats all day today. There's the whole city is full of cats and they're a bit scared of her and some are quite brave and are trying to attack her, like they're hunting her down the street and trying to pounce on her all day. Um, so yeah, we're a bit more paranoid with cats and dogs in Morocco because it's a high rabies country, so we're a bit more paranoid about her getting attacked. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You can see why so many people come here to do Instagram pictures, Instagram shoots. Every corner you turn is just like super photogenic. So uh, from here, Leah. Oh yes, we're going to meet up with um, a few people that we met in Portugal um, when we were camping at the beach and they said that they were going to come to Morocco as well and they are actually here today in the same town as us. So they just crossed the border like we did yesterday and we're going to meet up with them and do some camping with them. Yeah, van life, they're Morocco style. Yeah, they're from Spain I think, all of them. That's right. I remember yeah. right. So yeah, we're going to meet up with them now. Somehow, I don't know where they are, they're somewhere here. In one of these blue alleyways. Yeah. There they are. There they are. I think we found um, the guys that we're meeting up with. They're in town, but we found their vans parked outside of the town. So we're uh, just going to go and park next to them until they come out. It's a bit I, can't believe, I can't believe we found their van out of all the houses. That's a bit stalkerish, isn't it? It's just going parking next to like some people. Well, they know we're here, right? In town. I think we should surprise them. There are more people than you think travelling independently and living the van life in Morocco. So there are plenty of opportunities to connect with other travel-loving and curious-minded souls. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting down around a campfire and sharing stories from the past and dreams for the future is, in our opinion, the best way to get to know people. These three nomads are from Catalan in Spain. Cayo, Dave and Ina are currently travelling in their newly self-converted vans. They, like us, are here to discover Morocco 
and get a taste of this unique African nation. So we are joining forces and going exploring together for a while. We're still finding our feet in Morocco. None of us know exactly what it's like to live the van life in this very different nation. But from our first impressions, we are absolutely loving it. There is something so special about this stage of a new adventure. Having seemingly endless possibilities in front of you, trying to figure out where you'll go and having no idea what you'll discover when you get there. It's all part of the adventure and you guys are welcome to join us for the ride. So until next time, happy travels. Thanks for watching the video guys. We just wanted to give you a real time update that we are still stuck in Morocco and we're not going to be leaving for quite a while it seems. But, uh, and a reminder too that these videos, the next few videos coming out in this Moroccan series was filmed before this whole coronavirus outbreak happened. So we hope that you are at home and can take, uh, watch these videos and take your mind off everything for yeah. a bit. I hope you guys are feeling well as yes. well. Um, thanks so much to our patrons who have helped us make this video. We really appreciate your support. We wouldn't be able to make the series without you guys. Um, for those of you that are not patrons, uh, we often release content on Patreon, which we don't put on the YouTube channel. And we've just put a bonus question and answer video, which is actually free to watch for all of you. We know you need something to watch right now. So if you want to watch uh, a video and join us for our last drive in the combi before we were quarantined, um, we will link that below. So go check that out. Otherwise, we'll see you next Thursday for some more distraction. Until then... Happy hand washing. <laughs>